Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the garage. Um, today I'm doing a quick video to talk about um, doing the aftermarket uh, turbo upgrade on a 6.5 uh, GMC turbo diesel. So this is my first time doing it, um, but uh, what I've decided to go with on this truck is to take the stock uh, GM turbo off and I'm going with a HX35 uh, turbo made by AVP um, and I'll put links in my description of all the different parts that that uh, I found to make up this kit um, but uh, the AVP uh, or the stock HX35 style turbos um, I was I'm just looking for a little bit more boost than what the, the factory GM puts out this truck's built for um, towing. Um, I just put a fresh motor in this truck. Um, I'm trying to make it the best that it can be for my application, which is towing. I'm not looking to roll coal or race anybody or do anything like that. This this truck is gonna be a, a, a driver and a workhorse. So, um, pardon the fan. Um, so what I'll show you is everything that I've come across in doing research on the best way to put the HX35 turbo in and make it a really clean install. So I'll just grab the camera here and I'll show you guys the turbo on the truck and then um, not all of the parts are installed yet um, and I'll give you a walkthrough of the different parts that we're going to use to complete this install. So just one second. Okay, so here we are, uh, engine bay, of course. Uh, this is the turbo that I went with. So this is um, a brand new uh, HX35 turbo. It comes from AVP uh, turbos. And uh, it's got the uh, flange here for making the positive connection um, to the outlet of, or the intake manifold. Um, there are some uh, videos I've seen where guys are cutting these off and then putting uh, the uh, silicone hose right to it uh, that goes to the intake but I'm going to show you some um, options that you can do if you want to make this a really clean install and not have to modify the turbo also making it easier if you ever have to change or upgrade the turbo later you would be able to accommodate that without having to continually cut these v-band collars off so um, I'm going to be adapting an SNB air intake kit to this, so I've got a silicone adapter coming off the front that's going to join up to the air intake kit. Um, we have, uh, you know, of course our, our uh, dash 6 lines, so I have my dash 6 uh, oil feed line uh, that comes up into the turbo. I've got a dash 10 line, I'll try and show you guys here. So I made a little I took a, uh, a factory style um, non-turbo fuel pump plate I drilled it and uh, put a fitting through it um, to put a dash 10 drain line so I've got my dash 10 drain line that comes up goes up to the turbo here so you can see that um, these turbos can be clocked on both the front housing and on the back housing so you can you know, make them point whichever way you want. One of the best pieces I found was from Rudy's, uh, Rudy's Diesel, and I'll put the link in. But this here, this is the adapter, downpipe adapter that goes from the HX35 turbo to the stock exhaust. So, um, so I think that's gonna be a really, really nice piece for mating everything up. And again, it uses the uh, V-band clamps um, to make the connection and uh, you know give you a positive seal so that is the turbo sitting on the truck and let me show you the other parts and pieces we're going to be putting on this okay so next up uh, what we've done is through quad star tuning um, they make a really nice uh, intake uh, top for for these trucks it has to be the non-emission style intake. Um, you cannot use the emission style intake, the one with the sort of, um, in the center of the manifold when you take the top off, there's sort of a round uh, structure in there. Um, that intake's not compatible with this. You would need to go with the non-emission style intake. 
Um, but what we've got here, so I ordered this one where it will accept my factory map sensor, it will ac accept um, all my factory sensors, plus it's got ports for me to be able to put my uh, turbo, uh, sorry, the boost fitting in. Um, so I'll, I'll be able to retain all the sensors I had uh, on the truck before with this intake. This is a very thick steel flanged um, unit. The tubing is uh, a large diameter tubing. Um, really, really well built. Um, you can order them powder coated in different colors. Uh, so I just, I went with black. Um, the other nice thing that is part of this kit is you can order it where if you have the, the factory V-band set up on the turbo, um, they have this adapter that will go to the turbo. You've got a V-band clamp. So this will create that positive seal to the turbo. Uh, it is O-ringed as well. So you, you really get a good seal there. And then um, you've got a piece of silicone hose that goes over top of that and then goes onto your intake. So you have a, you know, a good uh, OEM style look. Uh, and again, you know, that positive seal to, to get the most out of it. So um, comes with all the hardware, gasket, everything you could need, including there's your clamps for your silicone hose, um, good quality clamps. Uh, so really nice kit. I'll, and again, I'll put the link for that in the video. Um, and I'll show you guys uh, the install of this once we, we get to that. The other thing that we're going with is we've bought um, from Flowmaster Exhaust. Uh, they make a downpipe and uh, crossover pipe kit. Uh, you get the two pipes in one. Um, this is a uh, um, large diameter. I believe this is a three inch uh, tube. Uh, all mandrel bent, um, you know, you don't have any pinched weird looking spots like on the factory one. So you should have good free flow through this. Um, it's got the V-band clamp set up, uh, comes with the hardware and the gasket for uh, the mounting. Um, so the step we're going to do before this goes on the truck is I'm going to wrap it with uh, this titanium exhaust wrap that I bought on um, Amazon. And uh, so we'll wrap this pipe and uh, do our stainless clamps. And then when we tuck this up in there, we don't have to worry about any wires or cooling lines or anything coming uh, into contact with this and, and uh, suffering heat damage. Uh, with the wrap on this, it'll keep the exterior of this nice and cool. So, so that is... Um, what you would need to put um, the HX35 turbo in. So kind of to recap, um, it fits the stock exhaust. Um, you do need to buy the rear uh, adapter or the rear adapter makes it super easy for the downpipe if you go with the one from uh, Rudy's. Um, they're, they, sorry, and they are available from Quadstar. Um, but for me, I was trying to build this on as much of a budget as I could. So price was very important and Rudy had the best price on that uh, that downpipe adapter so I went that way um, Quadstar had the best price and and the best um, not only the best price but the best options for ordering this intake top to create the least amount of work in adapting an HX35 turbo onto this truck so you know, time is worth money as well. So if you can do something properly and efficiently and do it once, then then that's, I believe, the way to go. So um, I'm not an expert in this. I, I'm, i uh, you know, not sure yet what the total output of boost is gonna be on this turbo and how the truck is gonna handle it. The truck is not tuned yet, uh, but that is our next step is to uh, tune the truck, but my, understanding of this is that initially it's only going to produ produce as much boost as as you lay your foot into the pedal so um, for the first little bit as we break the new motor in we're not going to be hard on this truck we're going to be producing you know fairly low boost from what i would gather and uh and then from there we'll get the truck uh get a tune from quad star tuning and uh i think it will be ready to uh to do its towing and work this this summer uh, pulling the family holiday trailer um, 
so I'm pretty excited to uh, to get all this together and, and try it out. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll we'll show you the install. All right. So Thank you. First thing we're going to try and do here is wrap this pipe. I'm just going to gloves. Now, I am not, this is my first time wrapping a pipe, so I am not an expert at this. I'm just going to try to do my best. I'm kind of overlapping this to make sure that we have good coverage um, and trying to keep it as tight as I can. While we're doing this, um, I rebuilt the 6.5 in this truck and uh, it had cracked the block and had pressurized the cooling system and uh, ended up hydro locking. I was going down the highway and all of a sudden it quit on me and uh, could not restart it, had it towed home tried a couple of times to refire it see um, when I pulled the dipstick there was no signs of water in the oil um, but uh, lo and behold drained the oil and out came a good a good gallon of water that uh, had passed through the cooling system and into the oil pan so um, it was very unfortunate. Uh, it's a low mileage truck, um, and uh, um, but with today's vehicle prices, it makes far more sense to fix these older trucks than it is to uh, go and buy a brand new one. Um, with trucks now getting up into that uh, 70, 80, 100 thousand dollar price range, especially for diesel workhorses. Um, I don't know too many people that just have that kind of money laying around, so, um, and the styling of these older OBS trucks are, uh, kind of timeless, so I'm a big fan of these, and, uh, the beauty is there's tons of parts out there body-wise for these trucks, so there's no reason to not fix them up. 
Um, you know, and then, yes, the 6.5 diesels are definitely getting a lot harder to find the blocks for. Um, you can buy new ones, like there's the, the GM Optimizer blocks, there's definitely guys out there, shops that are doing, you know, newly rebuilt motors, like uh, Leroy Diesel, for example. Um, they offer a fully rebuilt motor package, um, and they're all reasonably priced. Um, for me, I got lucky and I found a block that had a very, very minor crack in it. We had it lock stitched to repair it and uh, we're able to save that that block that I located and use it for this build. So I'm happy about that. Of course, as I get closer to the end of this project, um, I'm definitely very nervous about the first startup of the motor. Um, I don't know why, just get a little gun shy um, fingers crossed you know when you do something yourself that you did a good job that you, you end up questioning did I check and double check this and and uh, I'm pretty confident that I did all the right steps and things to get the job done so I'm just gonna grab some some cutters here we'll cut this off we'll so we'll cut this one of these stainless ties on it. Tighten this up. top wrap probably won't come undone because it's got the pressure of all the subsequent wrap on it but just to be on the safe side we will put a tie on it anyway there we go that's not going anywhere and there we have it. We have wrapped our downpipe. So that is ready to go. And our next step is going to be getting our top mounted on the truck. And uh, so stay tuned. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble and put our fittings on our intake top. Um, and any sensors that need to go in. So um, we're gonna start off with, I think we'll get our map center sensor mounted. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of lubricant on this rubber seal here to help it go in. There we go. And bolts are lined up. Then we put just a tiny bit of blue thread locker on there.
These don't have to be super tight, just, just enough to keep the housing in place. Okay, so we got our map sensor mounted. Now we're gonna mount our intake sensor. Just make sure everything looks good there. And then what do we got? Actually, before we put that one in, we're going to mount one of our, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna put our, our sensor for our uh, boost pressure gauge is gonna go there. Uh, this is a uh, bolt to the manifold. So that one stays the way it is. And we're gonna plug this little port here um, because we don't have another sensor uh, requirement for that. So for that one, I'm just gonna put a little bit of thread sealant onto it. Down. Okay, we're going to put a little bit more thread sealant on this one. Get a wrench and tighten that one up. And I'll get the sealant on this. grab a Go. Sensors are in and tight. Got everything 
done up. So our next step is going to be to get this mounted on the truck. So stay tuned. Okay, so there is the adapter flange <clears throat> on the turbo uh, mounted with a V-band clamp. Our next step <clears throat> is going to be to, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be to um, add the silicone adapter, uh, the hose that goes on here, like so. And then our intake is going to join into that and uh, we'll bolt our intake down. So I'll show you guys a shot of that when it's all done. Hang on one sec. Okay, so we are all done. We've got everything installed. So there you can see the uh, downpipe is connected now to the turbo. And then our turbo is now connected to our intake manifold. And uh, intake manifold is now fully installed. We've got our map sensor hooked up, intake sensor. We've got our um, boost pressure. Everything is done. So all I have left to do now is I've got to put our uh, passenger fender back in, uh, get our air intake system installed, and uh, we're going to be ready to fire this up. But that's it for this video. Um, just wanted to show you guys what's involved in uh, getting that HX35 uh, turbo housing installed in place of your factory GM turbo. And uh, it's really not too difficult of an install, uh, especially if you get all the right pieces. So check out the uh, description of the video. I'll put the links in there for the different parts that were used to accomplish this. And uh, We'll see y'all next time.